Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Ask Jungle Scout. This is number 17, I'm your host Lenny and we've got some excellent questions coming up today. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel uh, so you never miss any of our videos. We've got a lot of great content coming out every single week, including a free case study. It's called the Million Dollar Case Study, where we're publicly launching a product on Amazon and sharing every single step along the way. So it's a fantastic resource for private label sellers. So make sure you subscribe to our channel to get all of these videos and more. First question is from Shay who asks, is attaching an ebook to customer follow-up emails still possible with so many customers now opting out of receiving follow-ups from sellers? I'm afraid to offer an ebook. The customer opts out of future communications, then gives a negative re review because they never received an ebook. Does JumpSend offer a way around this? Thanks for the question, Shay. So what this is speaking to is that quite recently, uh, Amazon has actually allowed uh, or made it easier for customers to opt out of emails and communication from um, sellers. You can definitely still send follow-up email campaigns and we highly recommend you still do so. However, not all of them will go through. So if you're offering an ebook, there's a couple of ways you could do this. The first way is to actually make it just a pure bonus for the customer. You don't mention it in the listing or the description and then you send it to customers in a follow-up email campaign um, purely as a bonus. This is a great way to over deliver value and give them something unexpected um, to really wow your customers. That way, if they, don't, uh, if they opt out of your emails and they don't receive it, then they're not gonna be unhappy. But I totally see what you're saying. If you do offer this as you know, included with your product in your listing and then they don't receive it, um, they might be unhappy. So if you were to go down that route, what I would recommend is um, putting it in a product insert as well. So you can include little product inserts in your packaging. What I would do is I would do that and I would say go to you know, this uh, website, put your website in, in order to claim your uh, free ebook that goes along with this product. So that's the way I would go so that even if they don't get emails from you, uh, that they'll still definitely be able to access the ebook as promised. The next question is from Stuart who says, can you please do a video about GS1 UPC codes? Specifically, how to update your private label listings with a new UPC. I have several listings with history and reviews and I don't want to lose it. Thanks for the question, Stuart. Um, essentially, the process of getting codes from GS1 is fairly straightforward. You go to their website, um, you, you, know, you give them all the information that they're asking regarding your business, um, and they will give you the GS1 um, UPC codes in exchange. However, what you're wanting to do is, it sounds like you've got current UPC codes attached to your listings, um, and they might be from third-party sellers, and you're worried about it, uh, your listings being removed, so you wanna change the UPC codes. As far as I'm aware, unfortunately, you're not able to change a UPC code once it's been sort of um, attached to your product. Okay, so you can't change it. The best thing to do, I believe, would be to apply for brand registry and then once you're successful for brand registry, you'll be able to change uh, the unique identifier that's attached to that listing. So instead of identifying it with a UPC code, you can then identify it with a model number or, or a different value, uh, which would then detach that UPC code. Because once you've already allocated a UPC code, I don't think you can change it to a different one. So you might have to look at the brand registry process. The next question is, when I order inventory from China, it takes 30 to 50 days. In that duration, Amazon gets flooded with the same product that I have ordered. How do I avoid this going forward? I'm assuming everyone is using the same Jungle Scout app and which is why this happens. Thanks for the question. So really, there's no way to avoid this, okay? Um, there's no way to predict you know, if other people are gonna come in and try to sell the same thing that you are. Um, I've seen this happen to myself personally, and to be honest, it doesn't really worry me, because at the end of the day, they're just starting out as well. They've got zero reviews, zero sales, and I'm confident that I'm gonna be a lot more bullish, I'm gonna be a lot more um, competitive than they are, and I'm going to push my way to the top, regardless of other people trying to enter the space. So what this really comes down to is making sure that your product is different to everyone else's. If my product is, you know, um, 
I've, I've verified a particular niche or a product that's doing well, and I've found a little way to make mine a bit different, you know, bundling it with something else or making an improvement, making it 10% bigger, whatever the case may be. If I've made my product unique and different to everyone else, I don't care if someone, if you know, a number of other people come in selling that same generic item because I've differentiated. My product's a lot harder for other people to copy. So that would be my suggestion. Just focus on making your product different and focus on following the launch process. I wouldn't worry about anyone else that's entering that space. The next question is from Jacob who asks, my manufacturer offers shipment themselves. Does anyone know if using something like Freytos has an advantage over just expecting what the manufacturer offers? Thanks Jacob. So Freytos uh, is essentially a website that will compare a whole heap of different quotes. Um, you know, from different uh, freight forwarders. So it's definitely worth going and using Freytos to get a whole different uh, lot of quotes. And then you can compare that to what your manufacturer um, is offering. As for whether you go with your supplier's shipment or whether you go down the track of finding your own, the main difference is that um, if you go and organize your own freight forwarder, you have a little bit more control of your shipment, okay? Um, if you organize that with your supplier, you pay them the money, and you know, they're the ones that are uh, relaying with the freight forwarder. So you kind of have to go through them to find out what's going on. Whereas if you organize it yourself, you have that bit more control and you can talk directly to the freight forwarder, you know what's going on. So I've done both. In the past, I've used my supplier's shipping methods and then I've also organized my own freight forwarder using Flexport. The advantage I see of doing it that way is again that you have that bit more control over what's going on with your shipment. You can also be very confident that all the relevant paperwork and everything is completely up to date and above board. You know, with Flexport, I was required to purchase a customs bond and I had to fill out some paperwork. Um, so I'm very confident that everything is, you know, totally legit. Um, you know, some of those things you don't have to do when a supplier organizes the shipping for you. Um, I've never had any problems with that in the past. However, I think organizing your own freight forwarder as time goes on um, is probably the most safe method. The next question is from Taylor who asks, hey Greg, you mentioned that to rank on the front page, you'll need around 10 to 15 sales a day to rank on the front page. Can you explain how you come to make that estimate? Thanks Taylor. So this question was posted on a recent episode of the Million Dollar Case Study, which I mentioned earlier. This session was about uh, the product launch strategy that Greg uses. Uh, you know, once you've got your product into Amazon, you know, how do you launch it so that you can get uh, ranked on that first page of search results and start getting natural organic sales? So Greg mentioned that uh, one of the methods he's gonna use is by doing promotional giveaways and giving away 10 to 15 units per day um, for a period of time. Okay, now the way that Greg came at that number was based on the product research. So based on how many sales are the current products doing on that first page of results, okay? So that's where the number comes from. If all the listings on the front page of Amazon are currently doing 10 to 15 sales per day, therefore that's how many sales you're gonna have to do per day in order to get your listing ranked on that first page. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. The next question is from Zeko who asks, what happens with the return products when you sell on FBA? Where do they go? Obviously they get sent back to Amazon Warehouse, but then what happens? Thanks for the question, Zeko. So firstly, I wanna state that this is for FBA, and this is just my understanding. But let's back up for a second and go through the entire process. So firstly, a customer initiates a return. The next thing that will happen is that Amazon will take that money out of your account for the refund. However, they will hold on to that money and they'll give the customer 45 days to return that product. If they don't return it within that time, Amazon will reimburse you with that money. Or if they do return it, then Amazon will issue them with the refund, okay? So now let's say that they have returned that product. What, what happens with it when it gets to Amazon's warehouse? So there's a few different things that could happen. Firstly, if the product comes back in completely new condition, the box is all intact and unopened, um, I believe it can be added back to your inventory and resold as a new product. If it comes back and the product is intact, 
but the packaging and so forth is damaged. Um, what you might see is that Amazon warehouse deals will come onto your listing as another seller and Amazon will sell that product themselves in a used condition. Um, I think they will actually reimburse you for that product so that you get paid and then they will sell it in a used condition. The other thing, if the product comes back and it's damaged, um, then Amazon will add it back to your inventory, but it'll be marked as unfulfilled and you can't sell that to customers. You will then be required to remove that inventory from Amazon as it can no longer do anything. Uh, so you can create what's called a removal order and you can uh, choose somewhere for that product to be sent to or you can do uh, create a disposal order. So you pay Amazon a fee and they will dispose of that uh, unfulfillable stock. Um, I've had to do this a number of times because for me, it's not practical to get it removed from Amazon and sent to Australia. So I've just had to pay Amazon a fee in order to dispose of this unfulfillable stock. So hopefully that breaks down for you some of the different things that can happen with return stock. So that's all the questions for today, guys. I hope you liked the episode. Make sure to give us a big thumbs up to let us know that you did. If you want your question to be answered on the show, make sure you drop it in the comment section below. Wishing you all the very best with your own product research and your private labeling, and I look forward to seeing you guys next week. See ya.